one of the stories that comes very readily to mind was the story of a wealthy man arguably the first billionaire recorded in the united states when they became a nation by the name andrew carnegie listen very carefully andrew carnegie was a very successful man history would tell us and then one time it was said that he felt very disappointed that many of the wealthy people within his class and the blessed people and the great people they were going to their graves and were never transferring the truths that made them wealthy and great and other people who were failures or average people were just spectators and they did not really know the secrets that controlled that level of excellence and then he got a young man like many of you know and may have heard called napoleon hill a young man in his 20s history would tell us and a young journalist and he gave him an assignment listen carefully the assignment was that i would give you letters of recommendation go and meet every one of these great and successful persons and i want you to interview all of them one by one piece together their philosophies and put it together in a concise format so that when we are long gone we will be able to leave our convictions for the generations that come and napoleon hill took on that journey and for a period of about six years there about he went around interviewing all the greatest and the brightest of the minds at that time and came together with 13 principles captured in a book that we know many of you may have heard about it called think and grow rich that was the product of that research vetting and interviewing all of these bright minds what philosophies did they honor to have produced such excelling lives hallelujah when i read that story many years ago it was so instructive listen to me you never reproduce a man's result until you are able to reproduce his philosophies his belief systems and his convictions never forget this no wonder the bible says let this mind be in you you want to become like jesus in experience you need to find out his convictions his philosophies his mindset the first and about most important um transference that needs to happen from one generation to the other is not physical things the transference of convictions the transference of mindsets the transference of philosophies the transference of beliefs believe me the bible says for as he thinketh in his heart is that in your bible it says so is he that means if something is wrong in your life i have taught you this that your physical environment is only a reflection of the quality of your thinking and your philosophies unfortunately those who desire to receive from great men are not interested in receiving their convictions they don't focus on their minds to to put together the quality of their thinking please look up what do you believe about god what do you believe about satan what do you believe about failure what do you believe about success what do you believe about excellence what do you believe about wealth what do you believe about poverty what believe what do you believe about challenges what do you believe about victory these are the summation these philosophies will frame your mindset and will inevitably translate to the results you have you can have two men of god who love god sincerely mentored under the same father or the same mentor and you find out that their results become different impartation is there several other things are there but one may be interested in learning more than just physical things for one he may be interested in holding the mic and making news the other wants to study This is very powerful so the first gift please hear me any father here any parent any leader any businessman any man of god in thinking succession 
the first gift that you can give your child and should give your child are a summation of your convictions what made you great what did you know what did you believe what have you come to hold through that has translated to an excelling life that is the first gift that you give your child not material things unfortunately there are many children that pride themselves in cars and houses and designer clothes nothing wrong with that except that their lives are empty like the prodigal son because the prodigal son had physical things but no conviction are you seeing that now when the elder brother wanted to get sad the father said no don't feel bad there is something that gentleman did not ask for he asked for physical things but there are other things that i have one of them being my conviction i was not born like this so find out what i believed to be what I, let me tell you this every parent here i challenge you and every father and every leader make sure you do not go to your grave without capturing and preserving your philosophies and your beliefs in the most concise way give it to your child as a gift and you truly give him an inheritance hallelujah your convictions the first gift that must be transferred from one generation to the other now please look up do you know why there are so many people who are poor and mediocre i'm not talking about finances but just to borrow a concept when a poor man poor them meaning a description not an insult when a poor man sees a wealthy man the first thing he looks at is his pockets not his mind are we together you know a poor man not just by the absence of resources but his passion to see what is in the box poor people admire physical things the glitz and the glamour that come with great men but any mind that wants to rise is focused on the mentality what do you know and what do you understand let me challenge you therefore that in your quest to live an excelling life or to create succession to your results the first thing you should look out for are men and women whose minds are open and malleable to receive not people whose hands are free to receive people whose minds are ready to receive no wonder in many homes you see that those who truly receive the inheritance are some of the outcasts the boys that walk and do all of that because the children never learn the young boy is there watching the father while he's praying he may not be a biological son but he's there watching every step the day the father is not there all the children are at the mercy of the one who has the mindset not just the one who has the physical things hallelujah so the first thing you transfer if you are a good man leaving an inheritance to your children's children are your convictions be sure that your convictions have produced a correct result otherwise don't transfer something that will reproduce your own failure too the condition to transfer your convictions is that if those convictions have produced an excelling life unfortunately the same mindset that transfers excellence is the same mindset that transfers mediocrity also mediocres remain transgenerational mediocres by transferring a mindset that makes for mediocrity in fact i can tell you this by scripture and by reason of what i do most of what we call generational causes and most of what we call generational spiritual problems have been kept that way through generational mindsets that are passed along to so if a territory has generational poverty what happens is it is not only the spirit that is transferred the spirit will ensure that the mindset that makes it comfortable in administering poverty is also transferred that's why listen to my series on deliverance your real deliverance is not just exiting that spirit out of your life but there has to be a reorientation the bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind unfortunately age does not equal transformation longevity in this life may administer experience through pain but it does not necessarily produce transformation hmm. is someone learning 
the next time your son comes to say daddy i want my inheritance tell him let me not see you near my garage or near my bank account go and get a clean sheet of paper and come and sit down let me transfer my inheritance and then start telling him the story that i was an orphan and as you are telling him that story ask him to write you are transferring an inheritance because at the end of that story the young boy will see and learn sadly the bible never told us how the prodigal son's father became great it just tells us that the man was great can i tell you every great man you admire seek to find out their philosophies what do they know what have they learned the moment you are receiving is start rejoicing because i assure you behind their convictions is the power that reproduces their results this man of god is having great results in ministry i can tell you it's not just impartation go and find out what are his covenants with god what are the things that informs his mindset why does he carry such a strange and a great presence of god what are the sacrifices that pack his ministry everybody say convictions yes sir i've had the honor and the privilege of meeting extremely successful people in my life fathers of faith business people veterans and every time i have the privilege of meeting and talking with them i'm not asking them how much are your shoes and shirt that is that is an unwise use of time i go straight to ask them please can you tell me your story and then i'm looking for the punch lines in the story when you change your mindset when you made a decision and i find keys there in the name of jesus i speak over your life the keys you must find the transference of beliefs that produce an excelling life may god help you to be sensitive to it yeah. hallelujah please sit down do you know that history and even statistics tells us that those who are closest to great people hardly become great themselves you know why because their focus is on the results usually it's those who do not have that privilege of access they are the ones who keep looking and between the lines they find keys let me charge you respectfully if god has granted you the privilege to live a blessed and excelling life financially intellectually in terms of your ranking and stature let me give you a kind advice respectfully speaking culture your children to understand that giving them physical things is not net inheritance it is the transference of belief